Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for those who've been hanging with me some time and welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. I'm Adela Levine, Intuitive and Medium. All right, so just wanna ask you real quick, um, if you like this video, like and subscribe, I appreciate it. And also I'm gonna be doing lives more often. So if you wanna turn on those notifications so you know when I'm doing lives, feel free to do that as well. All right, let's get into this video. This is about how to get rid of unwanted spirits. Okay, I get asked this question a lot and I feel like I, put a lot out there about this. I honestly realize I haven't done one specifically like this, not in a long time, or even with the how to aspect to it. So here we go. If you feel like you have spirits in your house that is not wanted and, or in your workplace or in your anything, and it's not that the spirit is following you or it is attached to the place that you're at. However, it can be you and it can be that you're open to it and you're willing to listen because that realm is around us on a constant basis. Or it can be, and it is true because I've done house cleansings like this, where people feel like I'm talking about the spirit, by the way, when I say people, the spirit feels a little bit upset about how they pass and how people actually treated their passing, not respecting the fact that they died in this space on that land and just plopped a house on there and kept on going, or you just moved in. Now here's number one thing to do. If you're moving into a place, whether you bought the place, renting the place, and this could be true if you are renting an office or um, I know you don't have control over the office space that you are working in if you are working for a company, but if you can manage even in your little cubicle or your desk or your office in the big office building that you're in, meaning your particular area, these things are important, cleanse, cleanse beforehand. So first of all, if you have a house or an apartment or any space you're moving into, no matter what, I don't care if it's brand new and it was built from the ground up and you watched it built, or if you are moving in and you bought it or you are renting whatever, always cleanse. So it's a reset. So if you cleanse using incense or sprays or oils, or even stick incense or the incense that I tend to love, which is Gloria, if you can throw out that name, uh, or frankincense and myrrh, if you can't get a hold of Gloria. I like to use the coals that you buy and you burn and then you put the, the resin incense, but you don't have to do that. You can get a hold of stick incense or sprays or anything, but you wanna cleanse the doorway of the front door, you wanna cleanse all of the doorways and the windows and even around your bed for those of you that I'm talking to who are we're talking about where you're living. Why is that? Because you want to cleanse the thresholds. There is something to the idea of thresholds. It's symbolic to that realm. So it's crossing the thresholds, i.e. the window, i.e. the door. Now about windows, just a little fun fact um, about what I've learned or, or my fun fact, because I'm sure you're not going to find this fun fact on Google, but what I've come to understand is, and I've learned from that realm, from the spirit realm, when they tell me, um, the windows are, cause they're made out of sand and they're more organic. And I'm talking about glass windows, I should say. They move through those windows pretty easily because it is organic. It is a little bit different when it's through cement and things like this. In other words, it's just an easier move because they're energy. So you got to understand the spirit world is just an energy form. So when you hear those cracks and crackles and bangs and people have told me that they've heard moving around in their house, you do often hear them through the doors or people have heard them through windows and that is an energy. How do I know this? Because I have experienced it so many times. Even an IE example is when I was reading way back in the day, I used to have a monitor that was on the floor unplugged. And as soon as I would start the reading, you would hear a loud crack through that monitor. Matter of fact, it scared someone very much who I was reading that day. I have learned that this is energy. So cleansing around thresholds. And that brings me to number two, cleanse around 
electrical devices. So around computers and your hot boxes, which is basically your utility box. I call them hot boxes around your TVs because the energy, their energy is moving through these types of things. Thirdly, what's very important is while you're doing this, you need to state this is a place of light. This is a place of good intention. All those of not good intention get out. What you are basically saying is grandma, you're cool, you know, family, you're cool. But, um, you know, Joe, who just wandered in, not so cool because when you are opening yourself up, you are basically, you know, logging onto the internet, ready to talk to anyone and you are not putting up a boundary, you're not putting up security over who you're allowing in. So when you're doing your cleansing, you need to state this because your intention, your voice, your statements is holding the most bit of power. Lastly, but not, li but not last, lastly, <laughs> second to last is crystals. If you get crystals, they are awesome. You can put crystals in, um, around your bed and all these types of things. Those of you out there who've experienced this, leave in the comments below if you've had unwanted spirits or feeling like you're trying to get rid of them. Do you use crystals? Are you putting crystals all over your space? Because putting too many crystals at the foot of, uh, sorry, at the head of your bed is almost like your own little electrical like hot box. Like you're creating an energy for them to kind of utilize. So I wouldn't suggest putting tons of crystals at your headboard. I know some people have written to me that you do not the best idea also. And this is important, the type of crystal. So if you're putting clear quartz and you're putting rose quartz and amethyst and all this, Okay, these are okay, but if you're putting tons of them, they are becoming more of a clear, um, empty crystal that those energies can move through. What people tend to like to use and what is tend to be the most popular and also works, which is black tourmaline. And black tourmaline is n known to absorb negative energy. Now, very important that you understand that what works for you does not work for everyone. For me, I do not like black tourmaline. Black tourmaline actually agitates me and bothers me. Maybe I am like just made up of black tourmaline, <laughs> my own energy, but I don't tend to do very well with black tourmaline. So I don't really use it, but I do use onyx, which is another dark, you know, a black stone. And I do also love, um, any kind of, um, like bloodstone. I know that doesn't sound right. I don't mean literally the bloodstone, but like a dark stone, like garnet and things like this. Those are grounding, but I will say onyx are and um, and like garnet and stuff are my kind of go-to, but I would put onyx on my top list when I'm um, using a stone to absorb negative energy and protective energy. Um, also, if you're not into stones, you can use metals, gold, silver. Mm, I have a lot of that around you actually works really well too. Kind of think Wonder Woman, you know, you're warring off this energy. So using things on your person and using things around you. Now, if it's in your home, um, you can put stones around your house. You can put them in front of your door. And I want to add, you can put other things like putting a feather above your door, um, kind of symbolizes flying it away. Some witches I know of you are out there and let me know if you do this and you have a broom, a witch's broom in front, cause that's really what it represents. It represents flying away, you know, pushing out, um, sweeping out the negative energy. You can put that in front of your door. You can put anything that you believe in is protecting you in front of your door and doors. So one time myself, I couldn't find something that I needed and around my utility box, I actually nailed a chain around it, a square, because it symbolized like I am tying and locking this energy down because I didn't want energy to come through. Now, how does it work real quick? Why does it work on spirits? Because it is your intention, but also 
when you're cleansing in these spaces, the energy of um, the smoke and the energy of the um, incense or oils and stuff does, it's kind of like throwing, you know, dust on a laser type of thing. Don't quote me because obviously I don't know all about lasers, but you're breaking up the vibration. You just got to understand that everything's like an energy and even sound. And that's the last thing I'm going to leave you with clapping. I'm not going to clap in her ear ears or ringing a bell. And I'm sure you've seen this in movies or gonging because you're breaking up the vibration. There was a place I used to work in. There was a spirit that someone was um, welcoming and allowing that I didn't like that used to do weird things like lock the door and people used to feel and see this energy. Every time I used to open up this store, this was way back in the day, um, I would ring a bell or gong something and I'd also play music, any kind of sound to kind of break up the vibration. So when you're trying to get rid of things that you don't want, make sure that you're welcoming the things or the people, because it's not things, there are people that you do want. So make it clear that who you're welcoming and who you are not, which is why I say those with good intentions, you are welcome and those get out. And how often do you do this? Well, once a week, if you're having things happen, and if you're someone who's open to spirituality or you're doing witchcraft or anything and you're playing or not even playing if you're serious, any which way you're working with this type of energy, you need to create maintenance. This needs to be something you're doing least weekly. All right. So I hope that helped. And um, for those of you on my Patreon, I'm going to be shoot. I'm going to be doing a video over there on how to protect yourself from emotional vampires. And I'll give. I'm going to give a a little more tutorial, a little more detailed on how to do that. Um, I am doing a medium gallery that's going to be um, coming up and that's when I'm going to do mini readings and people have already started to buy tickets. So if you want to come to that, it's going to be a very limited space where I'm doing medium readings, which means I'm talking to, to your people who have passed. Follow yourself, follow no one. Oh, I forgot to say cheers. Did I say cheers? Oh, listen to your inner voice. And I'll see you soon.